What's up, everybody? I am Johnny Christ, and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Make sure you're already subscribed to the channel right here. If you got some shit to do, this conversation will probably go a little while. We got a lot of booze to get through. Uh, you can always find us anywhere you podcast and listen along. We're going to be doing that every time. You can go find that anywhere you find your podcast, Drinks with Johnny. Now, this week, I'm really excited. It's been a long time coming. We had a few uh, snafus and some scheduling, but today I am joined by CEO of Sovereign Brands. I am here with Brett Barish. How are you today, my friend? I am excellent. Uh, it's not often I can just drink with somebody, so I'm feeling good. And I, and I should say it differently. I drink every day, but it's not often I'm drinking with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink on your own, but uh, you know sometimes it's nice to be a social drinker. You have a drinkable well, social eye as they uh, say. But, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I said, like I said at the top of this thing, it's uh, been a long time coming. I know last year we talked about doing this in person, uh, or actually before last year, rather. And then, uh, you know, there was a couple of scheduling conflicts that trying to get you virtually. And then you just had a daughter, correct? A, a few weeks uh, my, ago. Uh, this, old, this old man looking dude just had his sixth kid. Six so, kids. Six kids. So, yeah, six wow. weeks ago, haven't changed a diaper yet. So I'm very excited. <laughs> how are you getting away without changing a diaper, man? You know, when you have six kids, you learn how to do things. <laughs> you learn. Yeah. I, I, as, I, as I'm writing in my book, uh, never look them in the eyes. So that's one reason. That's one way to get around, get around it. <laughs> that's incredible, man. I didn't, I didn't know you had six kids. I know, I know you had a daughter. Uh, older daughter that's like 20, 21 years old now. 21. Uh, she's out there. She's near you. She's at uh, Chapman in Orange County. Oh, Chapman. Oh, I know. Exa- yeah. I've, I've driven by there many a times Yeah, out here in Orange County. Yeah. Um, and is she, the, so, is she the oldest? And then it goes all the way the down oldest. from there? She's the one who every so often she cares She cares about me when I, because I, she knows I can help her. So she's the oldest. And then I go down and I have a, God, a seven, a five, uh, uh, a four, a two, Jeez. and just born. I, f- I forget. How how do you have time to create all these wonderful spirits and uh, champagnes and wines? Oh, they give me energy. I love it. I love it. I've got <laughs> pictures. We do pictures as soon as they're born, and in the pictures, I'll be uh, I'll put the the my wife will do it. It's great. She'll have the put them in like uh uh um with ice uh. A nice chest okay. of our brands, or she'll put bottles around them. Um, their first words are my brands. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but you know what's funny, Johnny? I grew up this way. Just so you know, I grew up in the liquor business. And oh, I yeah. swear to God, I remember I have three older brothers, and we joke, but it's still true. When we were about six years old, so that would be like kindergarten, um, my parents would give us alcohol to take to school to our teachers. Yeah, I was so going to ask you about that. to school. With ba- with bags of alcohol to take to our teachers as gifts, which sounds insane today, but I do the same thing now. The same thing now. That's hilarious. So, how old were you guys when you were bringing when you were bringing six booze? years old? Wow. Six years old. Yeah, we'd walk to school. Yeah, it's great. but hey, that's the greatest thing about the liquor business is you're every at some time you're everyone's best friend because they all want alcohol. <laughs> uh, we were always the house with. So much alcohol in it. Uh, you could steal it any day of the week and no one would notice. That's hilarious. I love that. That's that. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't grow up that way, but I do know that you're like third generation, at least uh, from my research. You know, your grandfather was uh, uh, was either owned or worked at a, a beer dis- uh, distributor uh, company. And then your father was wor- worked at Jim Bean for 40 years yep. and eventually became the yep. CEO there. Why don't you walk me through a little bit? I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit with, you know, the hilarity of bringing booze to your, t- to your teachers for the holidays as gifts. But what about like, uh, w- what else was there there? I mean, obviously you still have a passion for it. You're making booze now. Um, yeah, what was it, so what was it, it like? It, as you said, my grandparents, my mother's side were distributors in Madison, Wisconsin of alcohol. Um, uh, we'd be, ri- we would have been rich as hell had they stuck through it through prohibition, but they stopped at some point. Mm. Um, and, uh, my dad worked at the same liquor company for 45 years. Uh, I, my, we grew up around the industry. I mean, when my dad came home from work, it, we, all we talked about was alcohol and uh, I had that bug. 
um, and uh, always wanted to do something in it. And my dad hated the industry, not hated the industry. He loved it, but I always thought like any father, you think there's something better for your kids. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And uh, started this company and, and uh, but it's, it's been the same for all my brothers and I, we're all in this business now where um, we just, we love what we do. We love the industry. We love drinking. We love socializing. It's, uh, there's nothing better than, I don't know. I, it, when I always think about this is from my parents' perspective, when I was a kid, if I could have my dad do one of two things, one would be a car dealership. Maybe I could get any car I ever wanted. Yeah. And the other one was an alcohol because it, to me, it was just cool. It was just a cool thing to be in that industry. Absolutely. So w- would you say early on when you were uh, learning the trades and, uh, you know, decided that this was going to be something you were going to, you know, uh, follow in the family footsteps, if you will. Uh, do you, would you say your, your parents and, uh, your father and your older brothers, uh, focused or, or kind of taught you the taste first or the business first? Well, which one came first and which one was, was more emphasized, I guess. Uh, I mean, um, as you learned from them, it, the, the tasting was always there because we were always around it. My dad would let us try everything, everything. And there was always new products. That's why, we're, I think we're really good at at, uh, at de- new brands and developing things because that's what my, my dad was into that. He he built, you know, when he, at his company, they, they didn't have huge budgets, but, and their way of building brands was trying new things. And I've always had been that idea kid, you know, back when I was, uh, I'm old now, but back when I was in high school, I wanted to do, before anybody, I wanted to do 100% agave tequila. I thought, why wow. can't somebody do this? Why isn't there a hundred percent agave? Which there's um, a lot of now, I, right? I, that's all they are now. That's yeah. the trade. That's the industry. Um, but I always had ideas for trying things. Um, but like anything, when it comes to, to kind of taking that leap, I didn't trust myself, but, uh, you know, we, uh, branding was always, you know, my mom would help my dad come up with brand names. It's the same way it is today. She helps me today come up with brand names. Yeah, you were just uh, behind the scenes here. You were just uh, saying goodbye to your mother uh, before we actually started this episode here. Yeah, she's my, she's nuts. She's uh, in her 90s. She rollerblades every day. She rollerblades Uh, in her 90s? Every day, rollerblades. uh, Every day. She just came over because she used to, it was shitty out today. She she used my elliptical machine in the basement. Um, She, she's my, she's my hero. Even though it's amazing, John, even though my dad, and I tell this, my dad was in the industry. My mom is the one who supported everything we did. Um, she's she's a bull in a china shop. She'll just, in a good way, yeah. she, she's going to make a mess and let you know, you know, what the hell we're selling. Um, she She's fearless and clueless, as I like to say, and that's a great combination. <laughs> that is, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously it is. It created, uh, you know. Uh, their own alcohol empire and now on to the next generation. I mean, let, let's get right into some of the tasting here, if you don't mind. What do you want to start with? I mean, we, you guys were so kind as to send out all these wonderful bottles. I got to get a picture of it real quick for my later social posts so everyone could see the evidence before it's all gone. So I I have, so in my my past brands, um, if, if, if you remember, uh, I had a big champagne brand called Armand de Brignac. They called it Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades, Huge yes. Huge success. You sold that one to Jay-Z um, in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Exactly. I sold it to Jay. Uh, and it, great brand. Um, but what it did was uh, it allowed – I could never do multiple brands because it didn't have the cash. And uh, I wanted – I had all these ideas. I wanted to try a bunch of things. And then uh, um, we ended up partnering on a second brand, which is a cognac that we worked with Bacardi on um, that we're still part of called Doucet. And then uh, uh, I had an opportunity to sell. I didn't want to, but financially it made sense. And I sold Ace and I was able now to do my current four brands. We just launched our fourth one. So we have a brand called Bel Air, which is basically the number one bubbles in the United States. It's in about 100 countries. Okay. Um, we've got a gin we'll go through. We got a cognac we just launched and then we've got a rum as well. What do yeah. you do out of that portfolio? What do you like? Oh, um, I mean, I like it all. Let's be honest. I, 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 there's not too many spirits or beers or wines that I haven't really, uh, disliked. You know, there's only a few, there's only a handful. 
Uh, you know, I, I kind of, uh, as you can see from my bar behind, I'm kind of a connoisseur of everything. I just, I just love booze in general. Out of the, out of the ones that you said, um, you know, I would probably be, you know, we'll see, but I, I haven't opened anything yet or uh, tried it rather, but we'll see. I, I'm, I'm a big gin martini guy, so I like gin for martinis. Um, cognac, I, I, I could get down with. Um, I know that your uh, rum here, is kind of like, is, is that like your biggest selling thing right now or? Well, that's the second oldest brand. It's mm-hmm. it's the number one premium rum in the US and Canada, UK. It's in like 60 countries and does unbelievable. You, let, let's let's try that. Do you mind? No, I, you you walk me through this, man. Yeah, yeah. Th- this part, I'll, I'll, I'll try and hold the conversation. You walk me through what we're drinking. So try this. This is called Bamboo. This is in the clear bottle. It's our, it, we call it Bamboo the original. So the original. The this OG. one right here. This is, this is the yeah. one, right? Yeah. Whoa. So this is what we started with. This brand, it's on fire. We launched it five years ago. Um, uh, so I'm a, I'm a straight drinker. I drink everything. This is where I get, I, I love, I get, I get trash fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. Let's, let's have a good time with it here, man. <laughs> um, but Bamboo is, this rum is, which is neat, is uh, uh, produced. In, most people don't even know where rum was originated. They think it's Puerto Rico. It's the West um, Indies, correct? It's well, it's specifically Barbados. Specifically, okay. that's where rum started. That's where it was created, and that's where this started from. So, taste. Cheers. Cheers, man. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for sending this. That's smooth. It's a really good rum. Got a lot of uh, got a lot of the banana flavors to it. I dig it, man. It's got great legs too for for a rum. This is definitely a high end rum. You can see it. It's it's it sits more like a whiskey. It sits more like a cognac or something like that. It's got all the great flavors of a of a really nice rum. I dig it, man. So, this is and what's neat is again you're drinking it straight. Yeah. So it's even better in a cocktail if you're doing margaritas or, or pina coladas or uh, dark and stormy. It just kicks it. But uh, to me, and every brand I ever do is it's not based on the cocktail. It's based on can I do this? Mm-hmm. Can I do this with it? Can I just drink it neat with nothing else? And you can. Oh, you um, absolutely can. I mean, this is, I don't even it's not chilled or anything for the viewers and listeners at home. This is just straight out the bottle. And as I stated before. Not the biggest rum guy in the world, but I could, I could, I could fuck with this, as the kids say. This is really good and shit. And what's happened, Johnny? And what you just said is what I love the most is we're bringing consumers to the category because they're not rum drinkers. Yeah, they're trying it for the first time. And to me, brown in the brown spirit category, rum stands up better than anybody because it's got the most character and flavors. So you get so many different notes coming from this, but it's produced in Barbados. It's from eight different sugar canes from eight different countries. The water in Barbados is water is important for all products. Yeah, but water in Barbados you don't have to filter it. The island acts as like a natural aquifer. The, the, it's like a sponge. Wow. Um, uh, it's aged up to uh, eight. To, it depends eight to twelve years. Um, but it's it's won so many awards and and this is it's. Uh, the word of mouth is spectacular. This is what's happened with this brand. Yeah, no, I could see why it's won so many awards. And uh, you you kind of spoke about the the origin of rum and being from Barbados, West Indies, uh, more specifically Barbados, as you said. I understand that you did a lot of research before launching this rum. Um, you 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 went through some uh, uh, some maritime logs and did a lot of research of of the origin of rum. Uh, what can you tell me about that? So what's what's kind of cool is the name um, is Bumbu, B-U-M-B-U. And in the 14th century, merchants uh, who traveled the West Indies, they would drink rum. And in my mind, literally where craft came from is exactly what happened with 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 rum. They didn't like the taste of traditional grog or rum, and they started to blend it themselves and add different characters and different characteristics and they would refer to that type of rum as bamboo okay and we've brought that back and that's what this is this product's based on and this is again we call it bamboo og or the original um and this is what we launched with and then 
We came back. Did you get the XO? I did. I do have the XO. Are we ready to go to that? Yeah. Um, Plus, we're going to taste a lot, so this is fun. Don't drink. You don't have to drink all of it. Oh, no. Don't Um, worry. I'll I'll drink as much as I can. How about that? So this is the XO. um, And, Johnny, when you taste it, you're going to see – and my goal was I don't I don't like if you've ever done a tasting or if anybody's watching has ever done a tasting of different, you know, lineups of whether it's Johnny Walker or whether it's uh, um, a lineup of 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 uh, Jack Daniels. Mm-hmm. It's really hard in my head. And, I, you know, I drink for a living. I don't think any unless you're the point one one percent of people, you don't pick up a difference. You really can't taste any difference between different styles or different agings. Mm -hmm. I want drastic difference. I want something where if you tasted one product and now you go to a different one of the same family, it's a different feeling. And we got this with this one. So do you have some in your glass? I do. I do. I was going to take a look at it first. Uh, Similar appearance. Let's see. Let's see. uh, Let's see the, the, the smell and taste on this one. Cheers, man. Let's get through it all. I love it. Ooh. See, this is definitely more up my alley. The other one, yeah. um, the OG is definitely a little bit more, as I was saying, banana, uh, banana forward. This one has a bit more of the spice. It's a little bit more spice forward. A little. Is the uh, alcohol percentage the same? At, uh, it's it's higher. It's okay. it's uh, I can taste seventy it's a proof bit. ones. Yep. But to me, and I don't have, when I taste, I don't have a huge vocabulary. I think this is like, this is like a big fat cigar. Mm. This is like dark chocolate. It's big and bold and heavy. Um, two comp- and, but I hope you can pick up, they taste different, right? Very different. I mean, they're vastly different. I mean, uh, uh, you, you, <laughs> you said like a dark chocolate or a big cigar. I mean, I definitely get both those flavors in the glass and could imagine uh, sitting sitting down uh, by the by the beach with a cigar and a piece of chocolate and, and a full glass of this and just being in a little piece of heaven. Correct. And the beauty is again coming from. I want an experience. I want everyone to have an experience. But let's. It's just like music. Not everyone's going to like a certain genre of music. Of I may like music, but you got to pick. So to me, bump between these two. You're going to get some people who love this. This is their this is their cake. This is what they want. They don't like this. It's yeah. too much. It's too heavy. Then you're going to have someone like you. Um, this is what they want. They want that big and bold and meaty and it's yeah. it's heavier. So I want both consumers. And then you'll have that strange consumer like me. I want both. I like drinking both. They put, both put me in a different mood. I'll mix the two. We call it an XOG. And it's the perfect compliment because you wow. get a little bit of both going on. I've never um, heard of mixing just two spirits uh, neat like that and calling it a day. That's uh, that's pretty cool. But that's the beauty is that's what I want to achieve with our brands is. You know what? I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that right now. I've, I've, I've got about equal amazing. parts. amazing. They're the perfect complement together. I could see that by the, by the, you know, the flavor profile that I had from each. While I'm trying this uh, OGXO, can you tell me what the difference was between creating both of these? Yeah, you said the OG was a little bit more going back to you know the OG of where rum came from, Barbados. Um, how did you change it up, and and what was the process in bringing XO out? So everything I do, I don't like to follow the normal pattern. Nice, isn't it? It smells great. I'm about to get in there. They do pair perfectly. Every you know, everything that uh, sweetened it from the OG gets bol- yep. gets brought out with the XO. But everything that's not filled out with the uh, you know the big ravines of flavor in the XO get filled out with the OG. And it just to me it just like it's like putting a zipper together. You know they just like they just it, really they complement each other. Yeah, absolutely. They complement. My goal with everything, as I said, is well. I have this mentality of you don't have to do things traditionally. You can think outside the box. And the, and I, I'll be honest, that's one of the benefits. So I work with uh, my brother, um, my brother, Brian. I like to think that he worked in the industry for a long time. I never have. And to me, that's a compliment. Again, the idea of complimenting each other. I don't 
sometimes if you're too close to, you know, I'm sure maybe this is speaks to you. If you're too close to the music, you can't hear it. You know, if you're too close to the industry, you don't see the opportunity or what you can do. And for me in creating brands, I have this best of the best mentality. I don't care. I want the best. Therefore, I don't care where it's produced. My, in Barbados, we couldn't get what I wanted in this profile of what XO is. And we then found we could get it in Panama. And we found a distillery and the way they, they, the way they produce and the way we wanted to get to this profile. We did this in Panama. We de- aged it. We aged it. Uh, we finished it next, uh, sherry barrels. It's aged up to 18 years. And it gave us that profile we were looking for, that big, as I said, big, heavy, smoky profile. As you said, the com- not only the complement each other, but they're both very, very good for two different things, in my opinion. For me, uh, if I was to make a cocktail that called for rum, I would probably start with the OG. If I was just wanting something to pair with the cigar, sitting, as we said before, just to sit back and relax and enjoy neat, I would definitely lean towards the XO for my flavor profile, rather. And I think, uh, you know, as you said, that's the brilliance of of alcohol and 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 taste and music and everything like that. Uh, you know, it's it's up to your discretion. So for me, that's what I would do. But for someone else, they might, you know, and that's all good, right? So that's why you're spreading it. You're spreading it across all different exactly. Profiles. And I don't get I, I don't get upset. You know, again, it's you're not going to please everybody. Everyone has a different profile. I've had, I, I was in a, I was in a grocery store shopping for my mother and I'd been to grocery store in years and I was wearing a bamboo mask and a 60 year old white woman comes up to me and she's like, she scared the crap out of me. She's like, I love bamboo. I love bamboo. Um, do you like bamboo? And before I could answer, she's like, you must like it. You're wearing a mask. And I said, yeah, I, I really like it too. And she's like, I love the original. I don't like the XO. I don't uh, like that, but I yeah. love the original. Um, But that's what you want is you want that passion for you. You know, you want that there's something that you got into their bones and they like it. Um, But they you don't have to get them to like everything. That's not the goal. Yeah. So did you at one point, though, did you like just kind of whisper in her ear and be like, actually, I'm the I'm the one that makes that. No, she caught (laughs) I I still to this day get freaked out, meaning that people actually never heard my brands. I had no idea what to say to her. Yeah, I no, had no idea. It, it happened. It definitely happens. That's funny though. I love that the first time I, you go out to a grocery store in however many years, you get scared by by a six year old lady that's that's in love with your rum. That's that's a great story, exactly. right? But it, but it's like, it's also the single greatest feeling in the whole world. So yeah. you know, I'll remember that story forever. Yeah, no, um, that's fantastic. These this is bamboo. These are our two. Did they send you a third one? They, the they did. Yeah. Yeah. The, the cream. Yeah. That, that, and that's your new, you that's your newest it? one. Yeah. Let's get into it. So we, we then created, so this brand bamboo is in about 70 countries. Okay. Um, it's, it, it, and to me, that's, that again shows what, why it's, it's successful because it's good in Latvia. They love it in Canada. They love it in Belgium in Czech Republic in the UK in Jamaica. Fucking like, Latvia. Just, Jesus. Yeah. It it just has a presence that everyone's jumping on. And so then we created this puppy, which is bamboo creme. Um, and uh, if you like, same thing, we're getting, you know, there's a huge category of people out there who do like cream-based products. Mm-hmm. There's a huge category of people who've never had it. And this is just, it's a killer. Yeah, I mean, I know that uh, you guys are very proud of this one. How long ago did this one launch? It just launched. It's probably a month old. We're out of stock already. We only could launch it Jeez. in about nine states. Wow. Um, it's oh, only- I mean, well, thank you for sending it to me, man. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's this beautiful kind of light caramel, very light. Um, oh, it's uh, it's a neat one. I'm excited to I'll try. It. Cheers. I'm gonna try it. Cheers again, my friend. I mean, it's great as it is. Um, this is a uh, for me. It's more of a dessert thing. Um, I would i I like to make cocktails, so I would definitely fuck with this in a in a like a desserty martini, something like a little like a yeah. like an espresso martini with this would be a, 
a very nice, nice uh, uh, little treat. It was good, though, man. This is, but again, it's the goal was, as always, is how does it taste on its own? Yeah. Because again, if I can get it to taste good on its own, it it it, it works. Absolutely. This is also produced in Panama. Um, this is where, uh, uh, again, we got our blend that we wanted to have. Um, it complements, as I said, on its own, but you can, same thing. I'm now mixing this with XO. Mm. I'm putting the two together. Wait, wait, wait. Have you put um, all three together? Have you pulled a suicide like we used to when we were kids on the fountain actually, drinks? I should call that. Are we going to come up with a name? I'll, I'll name it the suicide. <laughs> um, have not done that, but I will. Um, but you can have fun with it. You know, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big uh, big Lombowski fan. So oh, yeah. w- watching watching him walk around with uh, with a white Russian anywhere he could go is just awesome. Yeah, uh, a, a um, nice Caucasian. Yeah, like, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to – that sounds really good too. I mean, I got to try that with a little bit of the XO because I, I, I could, I think that that would be really nice. Oh no, it's uh, this is this is definitely if you go to this, you can skip dinner, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, man. No, this is this is really great. So I have a question though. I've never really known um, how they do it, so maybe you could walk me through it. How do they get like the cream to this alcohol? Um, yeah, I know like you know, there's there's ones like Bailey's and stuff that are more of a liqueur. What is the percentage on this one? And what is the process of making uh, a rum uh, uh, cream uh, alcoholic? You know, uh, you know, spirit basically. I forgot what the percent is. I think we're close to fifteen. I forgot. So this is like um, a liqueur, this is like a liqueur, something like a Bailey's or a Kahlua or something like that. You it know? falls into that. It okay. falls like t- the, the, the category where that you lump in basically anything that doesn't fall into traditional, you know, rum, cognac, tequila, mm-hmm. uh, uh, bourbon, whiskey would fall into what you just said is liqueur category. Okay. Um, so they would fall into that. Um, but it, it's, uh, it, it's, Process is more to do with the flavoring of how you think it should come across and what's the mouth feel. Because if you've had and you can taste other cream based products, there's the heaviness, there's the thickness. Yeah. Um, there's the, the, the color of it. It's the, so that blending that takes place is that's where it gets critical. Cause you, not only are you deciding the taste, it's the mouth feel. It's yeah, the thickness, those the vico- things, the viscosity, crystal. like, like, I don't know. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Correct. I just did the, uh, the XO mix with that. Like that's, that's incredible. And I didn't mean to cut you off cause I am really interested. So I guess my question is more, uh, in the process, like, is, do you make the alcohol and then blend in the cream? Is it, or is it all, I, I, I guess, how does it all come together? It's well, it, it's from, don't think of it as a distillery perspective. It's, yeah. it's the, the initial you said, it's the blending. It's taking rum and what style of rum and what you want and taking uh, the cream and blending it and with what kind of spices is going to get you the connection to fuse the two together. That's gotcha. what it is. And which, did That's you did you create a new rum for this uh, uh, bamboo uh, cram? Or is it one of the, is, is it something similar to the XO or the, it's or based on the XO. Exactly. It's, XO. Okay. it's based on the XO to us. It wouldn't have worked with original. It would not have worked with that because it's too, there's too much mouthfeel that are going against the other flavors that we were, we wanted to bring across. Yeah, there was too that. much going on. So something that's more kind of, you know, per, uh, vertical in nature in the sense that, um, there's not as many characters, but it's bolder. So that connection worked well with us. Yeah. I mean, it's delicious. And I did take your recommendation and put the XO in it, as I just said. And I mean, how is it? Cause I didn't, I actually could mix it. Yeah. I just keep mix every time you come up with this new idea to mix it, I'm like, Oh, I got to try that. <laughs> so, so I'm just but going to it. Is. That's what that's what cocktails are, right? Mm-hmm. It's finding complementary products that work together. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I think I'm going to be the first one in history right here on drinks with Johnny to attempt the suicide of all three. <laughs> Let's just see how that goes. You know, why not? Uh, uh, let me cleanse the palate with my water here. Um, so well, what is your go-to alcohol? You know, it's typically uh, uh, scotch whiskey or, or bourbon, uh, followed shortly, very shortly, by a tequila. And then uh, gin, as I'm excited to get into your gin here. 
uh, for martinis, as I said. But uh, I'm definitely not opposed to rums, vodkas, um, uh, all those all those wonderful things when it comes to making cocktails. I've uh, since starting the show less than two years ago, I started making cocktails up here at my home bar. That's kind of the the preface of this whole this whole show that I've created. And uh, I, I enjoy going back to, you mentioned earlier, the Prohibition and how you guys are in retro, you went through it. I've got a few Prohibition books and, you know, the whole bang for your buck and time for your buck was a really interesting thing to me that was happening when you'd go into these uh, quote unquote speakeasies during the time and you'd get these cocktails made by, made by all these bartenders that are super boozy and, but really delicious. You don't realize that things like the last word cocktails like that that are just you know here's here's a uh, uh, high alcohol content gin already let's go and add chartreuse to it which which actually has even more alcohol content yeah. and figure out how to yeah. make that and you know there's there's a lot of really cool drinks like that and a lot of them are as you know are more based on the spirits that I was talking about the whiskeys the gins of the world um so, not so, so much if, of the rums if I, if I could ask Scotch. Are you a peated guy? I'm more of a peated guy. Yeah, my my region is yeah. uh, is, so, pre- is predominantly the Isla Region is the uh, is the stuff that I, I I predominantly like. Yeah, so that's my I I'm a I like to say I'm a I'm a uh, I don't I get stuck in a category and just keep drinking it and drinking it and drinking it until I ruined it. <laughs> yeah. And right now I'm in the Scot I'm in the I'm in the Scotch category right now. And I'm in the peated, heavy, heavy peated. How, how's that and going? Just, what's the what's the, what are some of the bottles you've been you've been getting into? Uh I am a huge fan of Lafroy. Oh, Lafroy, um, yes. Yeah, I, I it's I don't know. It happened to me years ago with Mescal, um, mm-hmm. and I when I first tasted Mescal, <clears throat> and I was like, "What the hell is this?" Um, and it's got that, I love that smoke. And then for me, the, the Scotch side, I think it's just really unusual. It is. You don't have that, you know, even in the U S we don't have that in whiskeys. Um, uh, and it's a whiskey, but that peated side, I just think is, it's to me, it's an old boot. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. Old and it's, boot. And, and as you pointed out, it's, it's unique. It's an acquired taste. I didn't like it the first couple of times I had it. And then once you start really getting into it, you know, the first couple of times, uh, and I show it to people, especially the bottle Lafroy 10 is uh, what was like my standard go to from Isla. And I'd show it to people and they'd be like, oh, it tastes like medicine or a band aid or something like that. And I was like, well, that's what initially I tasted too. And but you start when you start to actually be able to taste what is in there, you taste all the taffy, salt water, the smoke, the, you know, the, the, as I said, the salt water that, that comes through that, that sea salt, that, it's just all there with a very distinct smoky whiskey taste. And to me, that takes you on a, on a real unique journey um, as far as whiskeys go. Now, now, you, now before we go on, uh, while we have it as a segue, I wanted to ask your dad, working for Jim Beam, um, uh, do you, have you done whiskeys in the past with other brands or do you think you would ever go into it or were you kind of turned off? Um, I mean, what – would you do a scotch? A lot of a lot of American companies right now are doing scotches with these. Uh, um, what do they call it? The the time it's it's a time lapsed barrels and stuff. You know the glass time lapsed barrels that they can do. Yeah. So a, a couple of things. One is we won't enter anything unless we can make a discernible difference. And mm-hmm. I think our current all our brands have been that way. Um, we couldn't figure out what to do that was different in let's call it American whiskey. And we ended up doing something not in America that we're aging right now. Mm. So we're doing something unique in what I would call the, the whiskey in the whiskey category. So that's coming, that's coming Um, with respect to scotch. And it's the same thing that happens with all my brands is I'm never, I, I wasn't a rum drinker before I started drinking rum. I wasn't a gin drinker before until before I started drinking, and I submerse my submerge myself in the category and figure out what do I like, what do I want, I like and that. that is what inspires me for the product side. Um, I started drinking gin. I started getting curious about gin and understanding it, and what do I want to have out there? The same way with rums. Even even these two, we always knew we were going to do both. 
Um, but we chose this first because this was the starter. This is yeah. to get people comfortable. And this is to kind of get those other people who maybe are more traditional in sense. Yeah. So that's how I've always done it. Scotch, I'm, I'm the same thing now. I'm, we're going to do something. I love it. Uh, I think we figured it out. Um, but it's falling in, you got to fall in love first before you know what you want to do. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I love that, that passion. As, as we talked about earlier, you did a lot of research before you did the OG bamboo. Um, and now correct me if I'm wrong. So you said that like everything's like a little bit over like five years old or about five years old, but I thought I read somewhere that Sovereign started, uh, back in 99. Um, was that so correct? So we were 21 years into this. The bamboo was launched five years ago. Okay. So every brand has come out at a different period. So uh, Ace of Spades was first way back. And then uh, our, this Cognac Doucet and then um, Bel Air, which is maybe nine years old now. But a lot of these ideas for me, even bamboo, this brand, literally what we wanted to do here is probably 10 years old. I just didn't have the money to do it. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't have the money. It's probably over that. It's probably 13 years now. I just didn't have the money to, to actually launch it. When you say, um, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think it'll be interesting to the listeners here too. And even to myself, when you say I didn't have the money to do it, um, what kind of, maybe not a dollar amount, but what kind of, a, what kind of money do you, do you look for to start something? I mean, for the average listeners or someone who's aspiring, you know, you're, you're, you talk about self-made a lot in your life. Um, for someone listening that w- that's just really interested and maybe wants to make uh, something of their own someday, are you talking monetarily more towards like a marketing or a business plan or just literally creating uh, the, the, the liquor? Back then it was literally creating. Gotcha. So like any business, <clears throat> you, you know, you got to keep sinking the money back in to make the, the, the thing successful. Mm-hmm. So for us, it was, even if we had great success with our first brand, it still needed more capital and you got to still pump it in there. So then it's a question of, okay, I've got other ideas. I have, you know, there's something we wanted to do in tequila probably 12 years now. Um, I just couldn't launch it back then. Yeah. Um, and money is, it, it, well, back then it's, it's any amount. <laughs> um <laughs> But to answer you on the how much, it's a relative thing because to me, and it's something I've learned, um, you got to know, someone told me this, you know, it's, it's like getting a haircut. I can take it off, but I could back, can't put it back on. Yeah. You got to know what you want to be. Um, if you want to be everywhere, it's going to take a lot of money. Yeah. If you want to start small and be focused, well, you need less. Um, and I followed the, the, the ladder. So where I became successful was starting small. Don't get crazy because we made those mistakes. I launched in 50 states. It doesn't work that way. Uh, We started over and you know what? We're going to focus on one and then we'll build the two and then three. So that's where success started to happen for us when we just focused in. It's kind of, you know, I I tell people in music, I always find it interesting today in music, um, the, the artists who are, putting content out on, you know, uh, on, on the internet and letting consumers listen to it. What they're really smart at is they're, they're following, where's my fan? And then going and performing where their fans are. That's building up a client base. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, that's where we started. Does that answer you? Yeah, it does. It answers me in, in, in so many questions follow-up questions. So I appreciate that getting into the weeds. It's what we do here at Drinks with Johnny. I'll throw you some stuff. You take it for a little while. <laughs> I love it. Um, I did try the suicide though while you were while you were sitting there. Uh, and uh, I got to say, you might have to, you might have to start endorsing the suicide. I, I can, I could be the ambassador for it. It's, it's got a punch, right? It's got a you punch. Feel, it's got, it. it's got everything. I mean, when you mix all three together, you're, you're in for a hell of a ride. I'm not going to lie. Um, and you're, we're, if we can convert you on rum, we can convert a lot of people out there. <laughs> uh, you don't need to twist my arm too hard there, Brett. It's just, <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. You, you did mention um, in your answer to the last question, um, starting small, was that, uh, I know I've asked, asked this in a different way, but was that from your own knowledge, figuring it out with your brothers or was that something that your dad uh, and mom more so maybe even distilled in you? No, it was, we learned it the hard way. So 
my our first six years just absolutely fucking sucked. Um, we made we didn't trust our instincts. I didn't trust my gut. We list anybody told us, you know, do it this way. We okay, we'll do it this way. Um, and it's not trusting yourself, and that's where we made just it, huge mistakes. But why we're successful today is we rec- we pivot quickly. We'll try something. Don't bet the bank on it. And then if it doesn't work, just move on. Um, and there's so many examples of that, but the first, it was, it was trying things in the beginning. It was, you know, again, trusting your instincts. We have a, this brand. I'll just use this as an example. We'll talk about later, but Bel Air, mm-hmm. um, when, when we wanted to introduce this, it's a sparkling from France, uh, competes in champagne. Um, our distributors said, you're nuts. Why are you launching rosé first? Um, you don't do that. And we launched, and because typically you launch with a brute first and you come back with a rosé or a blanc de blanc, a demi sec. And then they said, you can't put it in a black bottle. You can't see the liquid. You can't do that. Uh, and then they said, you couldn't compete with Moet and Vub. You can't do that. 20 years ago, I would have listened. I would have changed everything. I would have launched the brute, put in a clear bottle, changed my pricing, dropped it, um, it's having confidence and you gotta, I'm in this for a reason. I want to do it my way. Yeah. Um, now this brand is the number one brand in the United States, uh, great. kill everybody, that. but that's, that's the stuff where we learned. That's where it wasn't, you know, my father or mother, it was just, you know, you got to put yourself out there and go figure it out, but, but learn from it. Mm-hmm. Just constantly learn. Uh, and every day we're learning. And I tell my team, please, you know, try something. If it works, great. Keep going. If it doesn't, pivot. Move on quickly. Yeah, and I think that's where you where you kind of you have your uh, your self made taste better, and that's with the Bel Air, the Luke Bel Air uh, uh, YouTube channel, correct? And uh, uh, through that, you've done some episodes. You did some stuff with Post Malone early on. Uh, that was at, you know everyone's seen that one now. I think you guys are playing beer pong and having a good old time. Um, or maybe it was some other alcohol in it. You can correct me in a minute there. But I, I like in this YouTube channel, in this YouTube series that you have, you like to talk a little bit more about the struggle than the success. So you want to elaborate on that a little bit right here? Yep. I, we started this series because it, it's amazing. We have tremendous followers and fans of our brands. And if you go on Instagram, you'll see people holding our bottles, whether it's Bel Air, Bamboo, any of our brands it means something to them. They've succeeded. They've done something. And it's how, it's what I feel. And uh, it started realizing for me, and and it was a few years ago, this concept of self-made and I did it. And for me, it's, I, I thrive on other people's failures. Um, I like to hear the struggle side because if you've done well, everyone just thinks it was easy. So on the outside, it just looks like, you know, how did they do that? How did they get there so fast? Maybe it was. But uh, to me, just like my own story, if you look at me today, I've got huge successful brands. But I'm also the same guy, you know, 15 years ago who I had the the IRS swept my bank account because I stopped paying taxes. And I put <laughs> my salary in my my then girlfriend, who's not my wife's name. I had my home. I uh, Back in the day, my home was foreclosed and the marshal would come and lock it. And I'm begging him, don't do this. You know, my mother would, she offered to sell her rings so I could keep my business alive, you know, and she's crying. And like, I remember this and it sucked. But when I hear other people tell similar, you know, losing it all and what they would give and that's motivating when, when Rhapsody. So I, I got to, so sorry. So self-made started from that. And I get to interview um, people in the music space, people in, in sports and business actors, actresses. Um, and I get to hear fun stories. Like there's a, an artist Rhapsody, great artist um, in the hip hop space. Mm-hmm. And she's telling me, you know, it, 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 it got to the point where I had nothing, but as long as I, I thought to myself, if I could just have money to get to the studio, I'll be happy. And for me, it was, I remember, you know, telling my mother, I remember this day, if I could just make enough money to survive, you know, just, you know, pay for myself, have clothes, pay for my daughter, I'll be happy. 
Yeah. And that's when everything turned great. It's like, I love what I do and I don't need any more. There's no rush. We'll get there eventually. But that's the stories I like hearing from these people. And everyone has a story. Post Malone, you know, that people would, he'd wear suits to school. He'd wear his dad's suits to high school. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, he was different. People would make fun of him. They just, they'd make fun. Like, yeah. It, it hurts. It's a struggle. And then, you know, someone believes in you, you get there. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That, that totally makes sense. I mean, uh, as you, I think for a lot of people when listen to you tell that story real quick of, of your struggles and coming to the conclusion that if I can just make enough to live, I still want to do this. This is, that's exactly what a lot of, I think what, what a lot of young people struggle with is what do they want to do? And I think that's a, a very poignant um, way of going about it is going like, okay, do I love this enough that if I was just, if I just made it by the rest of my life, took care of the people that I, you know, uh, to a point of the people I love, like my daughter, my, my wife, my significant other. Um, but that's all I had money for is would I still want to do it. Or am I only chasing after it because I want to make all this fucking money, you know? And Correct. I, and I think that that's a, I think that goes back to the old adage, you know, you got to do what makes you happy more than makes you money. And, uh, correct. The money will come. But I think Johnny, I Johnny, I think what you just said, I, I adhere to is the first step is what the fuck do I want to do? Yeah. And for some people, you know, I don't know for you, but for some people that's a, it, for me, it was horrifying. It took me 31 years to figure that one out. Cause I want to do everything or I don't know what I want to do. That's the hardest step. And then the next one is what you said and what, you know, in the beginning stages, when we launched this, I thought it was going to be easy. You know, I, I thought it would fly at my first idea. This would be great. And then I realized you're, it took me a long time to figure out, you know what? It doesn't work that way. If it happens, great. It wasn't meant to happen fast. Slow down, relax. There's no rush. You know, I'll get there. And that's when it just, everything slowed down and got better. Yeah. yeah. That's, but, but getting back to it, the self-made series is, I started the same way at every question, you know, what does self-made mean? You know, what are your, what's the struggle side? Like, tell me the, you know, the suck side. Today I interviewed a, a duo uh, from, they're the number one um, group artist out of Tanzania, uh, 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 Navy Ken, Kenzo. And they were saying it's a couple they met in high school. Uh, they went, met in college. When they came home, they, they slept in a one bedroom apartment on a little single bed, you know, like they had nothing and they didn't think it was ever going to work. And they got to the point where, you know what, they were going to give it up. And someone told them, just put the song out there. Let's see when on the radio to huge success. That's awesome. like, that's motivating. I love those stories. That, and I'm, I'm so glad you're bringing a lot of those stories to light in your series. Um, everyone can go check that out at YouTube, right? Just self-made uh, taste better. Um, if they type that in. Uh, yeah, now it's linked to just Brett Okay. Brett is um, another place. They can Brett go. .com. And it, Silver it, brands too, it, right? Silverbrands.com is the other place they can find you. And then Yeah, that's Brett where you can see all the brands and it'll link over. Yeah, yeah we'll just we'll get but, those plugs, uh, uh we'll get those plugs going right now. Everyone uh, Brett Barish, CEO is on Instagram. Uh, you know, uh, as we said, Brett Barish, cheers everybody. Silverbrands uh .com, Brett .com, all these wonderful things that you're doing. Um speaking of all the wonderful things you're doing and the success and the struggle and the story going through it. I do know that there was a couple that were, uh, that you'd done before, obviously that we haven't touched upon just yet, but there was three vodka. There was like the 3 a.m. vodka. You guys put, um, caffeine in it and it was like the first soy based vodka. Can you tell me a little bit about that project? Cause I, I never actually so, got a chance to try it. So that was our first brand. Um, I consider it my most successful brand and it doesn't exist today. Because it got me here. Yeah. It literally, you need that. That's neat. And uh, you need, that's the thing that we learned everything from of how to go to market, how to, how to talk to the consumer, where to focus, how to focus. It was a unique brand. It was based on, we, we distilled soy and made vodka out of it. Um, smooth as hell. I remember back in the day when Max Magazine was the shit, they called it the healthiest way to get shit faced. That's amazing. Uh, so what year, what, was, I'm sorry to cut was, you off, but what year was that then? Uh, you said it was like one of your first ones. So is that like 1999, 2000, something around that? 1999. Okay. 1999. So 1999, we it launched, they weren't as, they weren't as uh, vegan and soy based as they are today for the, for the commercial side of things. Do you think 
you were just way ahead of your time, perhaps? Uh, it's a great question, and we think about that. It's possible, but I, I but I think I think it was that learning curve. I think yeah. that's what did it. Um, you know, it's but it, you know, it's true. It's when I asked that same stupid question, would you change anything? I couldn't have done what I've done now if it wasn't for that brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in some ways, I'm glad it didn't happen because who knows if I would have gotten to this. Um, but at least it got me started. But it was a great brand. Uh, I got it tattooed on me. Uh, yeah. Cool looking package. It had like a, a a hole in the cap, like for a carabiner. It was just it was just the coolest brand. Was it just the um, three that you got tattooed, uh, or what was the tattoo? Meeting. The number three, our yeah. symbol, the number three. Uh, and it, it just, it, it, even that taught me, it's like, you know what? I, I love what I'm doing and I don't, I, I don't care what's going to happen. You know, I'm all in on this, uh, mentality. Um, but that was our first brand. And to show you how bad it was when we first started, we literally launched the brand on 9 11. Whoa. Uh, we were all on planes heading down to Florida to launch our entire company and brand. Uh, so you couldn't ask for a worse situation or it could have been worse, but yeah. a worse situation to dive into. Um, but it is what it is. And, and it's for, still, it's gotten us to where we are today. And for the listeners at home that you, you already had the launch day it's for some of the younger kids that might be listening. They're like, Oh, why would he choose that day? Now you already had the launch date in mind before that happened. Correct. Correct. We were all down. We were all on planes. I remember we were all on planes to yeah. launch the brand the next day. And that's what happened. But, uh, but that was our first brand. Um, today, as I said, we have four brands in the portfolio, um, with another six, seven, eight, nine to come. Oh, I can't so, wait. Um, but the four, let's get back to the four that we got going right now. Let's go down the line again. So we got the, we got the, uh, bump OG, the Bumbo, Bumbo XO. Are you up for tasting something else? Yeah, yeah. Let's move on here. Then we got the. I just want to recap for everyone at home. Then we got the the Bumbo Creme, um, all fantastic. Put them all three together, make a suicide, or just put the first two together or the last two together. They're all great. It, it, it works in every facet. Oh, before we go on to the next one though, you mentioned like the you know getting the tattoo of your logo. Um, the way that these bottles look different, you know, you should, you know, people would have told you differently where, how to put your sparkling into a different bottle. How do these designs come up together? Is it you and your brothers? Is it, is it you predominantly who's running the design? I mean, you, these are definitely unique looking bottles too. I know that the glass has to be blown different for even a bottle to look like that. It's not a typical bottle. So, um, what, what goes into that? It's all, uh, again, if I equate it to music, because I get to speak to a lot of folks like yourself, Love it. You, you find elements and you park them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a note or a beat or a, or a hook. And there's something there. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And we design everything ourselves. We create everything ourselves. We name everything ourselves. But we find things that we like, whether it's, you know, I have, all of a sudden I'll have an idea. I saw something. I saw a shape I like. And it turned into something, um, uh, or a name gives you, gives you inspiration. So Bamboo, in this case, it's one of the only brands where the name is so connected to the spirit. And it gave us that inspiration for things like the X. And I, I wanted to go back to the kind of the X marks the spot. And I wanted a cork that was long, like you'd bite it like a pirate would. Yeah. And it's, just, it's probably the longest cork in the industry. It's just a big, long piece. Um, little things matter to do, me. Do, I want, do other, I, do other companies have cork envy? Do you think? Uh, definitely. Now they do. <laughs> now they do. I agree with that. But, but I think, you know, they're not, it's not our brands. What I'm, I love about what we do is this is, we're not a giant corporation with a lab mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, agencies involved, you know, working up industry statistics and what should we focus on? You know, we're we're shooting the shit. There's a few of us tasting every day, trying things, come out up with stuff. But I want it to feel special. So everything from there's an X on top of the bottle to an X on the punt of the bottle um, uh, that has meaning, that has something going on. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna buy this, you're gonna put it on your shelf and you want to show it off. And I want to make you feel bad if you throw it out when it's empty. <laughs> um, and that's what all our brands. 
have a feel, but That's, they all tell a story. Yeah. Um, the cognac's a great story. You're going to love this. Is, one. is that what we're going on to? Okay. Let's get on to it. Let's do this. So it's the black bottle. Yeah, that's the. Is it just uh, pronounced as it sounds, villain? It, it well, it's called Vion. Vion. Okay. Oh, it's Vion. it's it, yeah. It would be French, right? So that I should yeah. It fuck is. me, right? Vion. <laughs> so it's unlike any. Have you have you ever drank a cognac? Oh, plenty. I love cognac. Yeah. So you'll never taste anything like this ever. Ooh. I just I took a whiff right off the bottle. I had to. Um, Wow. No, that's, I'm not even going to hesitate on that. That was such an interesting smell. I got to get into this. All right. So I'll tell you about it after you taste it. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do that. Um, again, thank you so much for sending all this stuff. This is, this is awesome, man. I really appreciate it. All right, here we go. Whoa. That has got a lot of cinnamon to it. Wow. It is not like any cognac I've had before. I'll tell you that much. So it's called Vion. I'll, I'll work the bottle and then go to the inside. Yeah. So in the 14th century, there's a poet. Um, his name was Francois Vion. Um, he's he was an iconoclast. He went against the grain. He... He, he 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 told on bad cops and the rich. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Uh, Real Robin he Hood. was a badass. Um, he got kicked out of France. He came behind. came back to France, and he was ultimately killed by a monk. Wow. Uh, his name was Francois Villon. Uh, uh, and so I like to think that the word villain comes from Villon. Like that's that's who he was. And he was our inspiration for this brand. We wanted to do something against the category that hasn't been done in cognac. Um, and the bottle is beautiful. It's this black glossy bottle with, uh, you can see the snake and the dagger. The yeah, dagger yeah. represents how he was killed. The snake represents, uh, uh, has just a ton of meaning to it, to the, it's on the bottle to this cool top. Hopefully you can see yeah. the little notches that in the top. Um, it's just a cool brand just released a month, maybe a month and a half ago in seven States. It's out of stock completely. Um, it's, and it, do you like the package? I love the package. This is this, see, this is up my alley with the snake, the, the black, the scaliness, the, you know, this, this, I, I know you're, you're, you're predominantly in the hip hop, uh, hip hop culture. Um, as I've, I've seen through a lot of your stuff, but I got to tell you, man, this, this, this is looking a little bit more metal than I'm used to seeing you put out, you know? Oh, that's a compliment. I like that. <laughs> um, but it's it's a different brand, and uh, we wanted again to do something different in the category. We wanted a discernible difference in taste. It's a blend of 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 a few different things, which includes VSOP and XO cognacs. Okay, um, it's made in the heart of cognac, uh, but we're going to have fun with this one. You can. You can drink it straight. You can uh, neat on the rocks. You can mix it. You can make a French seventy-five. Uh, it's got it's got a punch on it. Uh, very flavorful. It's different. It's different. It's very different. And when you just said French seventy-five, I could I could already taste it in there, and that would be phenomenal for French seventy-five. I, I'm not gonna lie. Yep. And again, as you keep saying. Uh, don't want to beat the head, uh, the dead horse too often here, but you know, I like that you wanted to have the flavor and the taste straight out the bottle, already unique, already ready to go. Something you're either going to love or feel indifferent about, whatever. But it's already something drinkable right off the bottle. It's not something that's going to be harsh. It's not anything like that. I mean, from from all four bottles I've tried so far, I haven't had anything offensive in whatsoever way. Like, there's no bitterness on the on the. Would you tell me palate? I would, I would, I'd be honest. I'll tell you, I, I, I'll be honest with you right now. This, some of this stuff is a little bit sweeter than I'm used to drinking, but it's you, it's unique. It's not. So what I have a problem with in, in spirit sometimes is when it's sweet, just to be sweet. This yeah. is sweet in, in a unique way. It's got some spices to it too. It's not just, Oh, we're just going after the sweet tooth who doesn't drink that often. I don't know why some companies do that. Cause if you don't drink that often, why are you a demographic anyway? Don't ask me, 
but you know, it's uh, uh, it, it, there's a lot of spice to it as well. As I said, the first thing I tasted was cinnamon. Um, as it goes a little bit further, you do have the smoked caramel that that's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is some, I mean, not even some, there's, there's assimilations of, of cognac in it too. And the finish, uh, which I like it's, it, it is just but, but very you, unique, but you, but you'll also pick on, you can imagine what direction we'll go in next on this, right? Yeah. If we, if we launch something else is something that's bolder, something that's heavier, something that's more like, more like an XO, like an a XO bamboo the, XO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, we're always thinking from a family perspective, like what does, what would the family look like? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how do we want them to look and feel in e- each of the progression as you go? So we're always planning, you know, five, six, seven years ahead of the time. What, what are we going to, we, we know what's coming first. We also know what's coming next. And after that, that's, that's incredible to have that foresight. I, I'm, sure that helps the business quite a bit i mean and when you say like the family thing i could i could see it now as as, as i'm looking you know to everyone to go f- find my pictures i have it all sitting here on my table you've got it all wrapped around you over there uh you can see the bottles are definitely you know familiar to each other um so i i correct i, I, can't I, I like see how this one there's goes no next. question i like uh, iconic symbols I like things that, that my goal, the beauty of, of this industry is um, it's, they're like tattoos. It's a badge of honor to have a brand. Mm. Uh, you want to own it. You want to wear it. You want to show it off. And ultimately, <clears throat> I think that's a powerful statement. And all my brands, I like simplicity. I like uh, of design. And I, I want a symbol to represent the brand more than almost the name. Like if it one day, hopefully, you know, the snake and the sword is what you remember. And you know, this as Vion. I think um, so. uh, same with Bamboo XO or same with McQueen and the eye and the crown. It has meaning to me. So, but they're all, uh, it's all a thoughtful process. This bottle was designed years ago. Um, I was in Japan and, uh, uh, I saw uh, uh, something of a similar shape. I'm like, this is it. We're going to do something with this one day. Um, but that's, again, putting pieces together. This is how it always happens. It's putting different pieces together to create something. Yeah, I love that. Taking inspiration from everywhere in the world and everywhere around you. Like a, a lot of people say, oh, everywhere in the world. Oh, I don't travel. No, I mean everywhere in the world around you. You know, I mean, it's it's the same for music, I think. You, you, you know, you've you've... Uh, talked about the kinship uh, that you've been able to talk to a lot of great musicians uh, through this self-made stuff. And uh, yeah, for me, I've, I've said it before um, to everyone out there, you're looking for inspiration. You got to, inspiration comes to you. It's not something you find. It's, it's something that you got to be willing to accept whatever it's that, like when it shows up, you just got to be ready. That's it. Correct. Correct. And, uh, and it's also the, the, for us, it's the mentality of, you know, it's not whose idea it is. It's just about executing the good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, meaning it doesn't have to be your inspiration. If someone else throw, gives you the idea, God, go for it. Do yeah. it. This is great. So this is, uh, and again, that's the, that's the hard stuff you learn. Either you're, you're fortunate enough to learn it young or you're, for, or you're unfortunate to learn it older. But if you learn it, you can get there. I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. So you did mention the next so one that, that we're going to go to. I figured we go to the 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 gin. Yeah, that's what I was. You, you mentioned the name uh, that was with the eye on the crown. Uh, let's get to. So the gin. this is the one that to me this is akin more to you. This one should be. Yeah. The so this, this one is, is called my the, old school rock and roll band. Oh, that's awesome! I was going to ask about the name because it does sound like a like a band name, McQueen and the Violet Fog. Tell me, okay, before we even get into this, because now you already spilled the beans, the your old rock and roll band. What genre of rock and roll are we talking? Pretty, that's a pretty broad term these days. Um, but uh, what 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 what, were, what was this band like, and why is it the inspiration for your new gen? I, I don't know if I can state the genre. More I can state to me, it's that old school rock and roll band. Yeah, it's it's. I wanted that. I wanted to feel like that. I wanted, you know, Florence and the Machine. I wanted something and something. I wanted to have that meaty feel. Um, yeah. This is this was the complete inspiration for this brand. Uh, 
Uh, I love it. Um, but it, and in fact, Johnny, when you have a chance or anybody out there has a chance, I think we're the only brand in the whole world. We put a poem on the back of the bottle. There's a poem on the back of the bottle. There's two stances here. There's four in total. And it's about okay. this band, rock and roll band called McQueen and the Violet Fog. It's just the coolest fucking thing. I love it. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm not that quick of a reader and we got to move on. So I'm, I'll, I'll read it later. Uh, I'll put a post out, out about it. Everyone follow Drinks with Johnny on social media. We'll have a post and we'll, we'll have something with that, with that, uh, with that uh, poem there. And uh, so you just love the poem. Where did you wh- put it on the bottle? Cause I, you I won't poem? tell you where the poem came from. <laughs> I can't tell you where the poem came from, but it's the inspiration. It's the inspiration for this band McQueen in the Violet Fog. Um, and it's got the eye in the crown. Mm-hmm. Some think it's like the Illuminati on it. Uh, it's just badass. The bottle shape is unique. So wait, wait, wait. You um, said some got, people think it's the Illuminati behind it. Uh, do you want to, do you want to correct them or do you want to let them just keep thinking that? Uh, I want them to think whatever they want. How's that? <laughs> um, it's got, uh, 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 um, Latin on the bottom, on the bottom of the bottle on the side. It's got our logo on the punt. Mm-hmm. It's got this kick-ass top. It's weighted. It almost feels like a stamp. Um, it's just cool. It's just, uh, it was launched about a year and a half ago. It's in about 30 countries. We got the highest rating of a gin. We passed, we got it. That's at 93, right? Just, 93 was the last exactly, I saw. Exactly. Yeah. Over Hendrix. So all our brands, Johnny, we, we go after somebody in our categories mm-hmm. to who we think is our, inspiration to to beat uh for gin it's hendrix we wanted to beat him for rum it's uh it's uh ron zacapa for uh cognac it's henny remis henny hennessy for bel-air it's moet and vuv um but i think this gin is is set your sights i like it Uh, i can't wait to try i'm gonna i'm gonna open this now um I do like that you pointed out the stamp top because I was noticing that before. And I, you know, I do think that that would work. If you put that in a little bit of ink and put it on, on something, I think that would work. But if you even feel the top, it's weighted. Yeah. When you have it, you feel it. Oh, yeah. What, 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 what is causing the weight? How are you getting the weight in there? Uh, we, it's weighted. It's heavy. We wanted the material. Everything I do, I want it to feel special. You, consumers buying this product, they're owning this. It should feel like a, you know, a Porsche. Uh, it should be thoughtful. It should have an experience. Everything about, you know, uh, you know, music. Again, I always refer to music as I'm a fan, but I love that. you know, uh, the band members are just as important as the music. You know what I mean? That's a great analogy right there. And, and it, you know, I'll, I'll take it one step further with what you were saying about the Porsche and stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's something that you want to be able to put on display, like the bar, the, like the bar you got behind your yourself, the bar I got behind myself. Something that when someone comes over and they recognize it at your bar or something, and you can go, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta see what this is about." You know, the, there's a story behind this. This is exactly. We're everyone's best friend at a dinner party. What the hell is that? Like, <laughs> you know, I've never seen that. But that's what you want. Is you want, yeah. you know, I remember. Uh, I remember being with my dad in when I was like 22 years old in a nightclub in Miami, maybe it's 24. Uh, no, no, I was younger than that, probably 19 or 20. And someone ordered a bottle of kettle one. I'd never seen it before. It was brought to the table, sat down. I didn't order it, but I tasted it. I loved it. I felt like it was mine. Yeah. You know, that's my brand. And that's what brands are. They should they should represent something. They should have a feeling to you. Absolutely. So packaging gives that. All right. So it's a 40% gin. I read the bottle there. Gin is my jam. Let's see what's up. I, I, I want to lie and say that it's bad just to fuck with you, but it's really good. Um. It tastes a lot of the juniper, and for me, this would pair well with my martini, which I used to always do uh, uh, green olives in. I developed an <laughs> I developed an allergy to them. Actually, it's not not a not a deathly allergy or anything like that, but I developed an allergy to green olives. So I had to learn from my grandfather, rest in peace, to put a lemon twist in it, 
Now, mm. you can definitely taste the, uh, the juniper in here, but I could tell you right now, I can already taste a, a, a lemon or, or a lemon zest to it um, in a lot of respects. It's already kind of there, so I could tell you it would pair very well with how I make my martinis. Can you tell me a little bit about the how you made this gin and the, the flavor profile I'm getting? So um, let's start with what we wanted. And this, again, it gets back to, I was never, Johnny, I was never a gin drinker ever. Mm. And then I started getting into the category and drinking and trying things. And one thing in, in the gin category, there's something called a gin wheel. And it's, think of it as almost like seasons. You have four different seasons. Okay. Um, some are very juniper heavy. Some are very, you said, you know, lemony zest heavy. You know, mm-hmm. there's different flavor profiles. I want to hit all of them. I want to hit all of them. I don't want to be any one. I want complexity. I want different characteristics to come through. I want to hit all of them. So then, then we get into where's gin from? Like, who, where are people producing? Every 99% of all gins are made in London, in the UK. Yeah. But why? Why do they have to be? They don't have to be. You can produce it anywhere. And that's when we started getting creative and trying to see, could we use different botanicals? Where else could we produce this um, to make a better product, this well-rounded product? And we ended up in a little town called Junjai, which is outside of Sao Paulo, Brazil. So it's from Brazil. And it's a little distillery we use. And one, the, the, we did a whole bunch of things with this product. One is it's two, it's made up of 21 different botanicals. Jeez. which is a boatload, yeah. a boatload. But that's where we got this well-roundedness. And yeah. we split the botanicals up to 15 and 6. So there's 15 uh, 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 core botanicals and then 6 essential that have more power to them. And then we did two distillation methods. We did a vaporization and uh, uh, maceration. And it's only 50 uh, fifty gallon pot stills unique product but it hits on all the flavor wheels so i'm immensely proud of this brand um you should be uh i as i said as we were getting you know at the beginning of this stuff gin is one of my one of the spirits that i really enjoy and i gotta say man you guys nailed it like i'm really excited to use this uh even outside of tasting it with you right now like this is going to be Definitely one of the bottles that I have on display and make some drinks with with, with some people on. This is fantastic, man. Thank so, you. So, uh, Wiz, uh, Wiz Khalifa is a huge gin drinker. Mm-hmm. He taught me to do shots with our gin. And I never thought you could do shots before with a gin. It's better than tequila. Okay. It's well, better than tequila. Okay. Well, I, I, I could take shots about just, just about anything, but... <laughs> it's never a great it's not always a great idea why don't you fill me in what 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 did we say about how he, you he take a just, shot i i was not he loved our gin loved it absolutely loved it he's like Brad, i shoot i gotta shoot this stuff this is the way you do it and we did shots and from then on i, I do shots of gin so we made shot glasses just for this reason to try oh. to, to get people to understand you could do this can you get that at, at uh brettbearish.com no, but we can send it to you directly. Okay, I'll, I'll take a couple when you get a chance. Yeah, but but again, it's it's trying to break the tradition of something else, mm-hmm. and uh, it, again, it it it's it's just as good, if not better, than tequila because it's got it's got different characteristics and kick that come through. Yeah, do you just do you um, just uh, do you just shoot it neat? You chill it in a in a shaker. Just shoot it. Just shoot it. Neat. Just shoot it. That's it. All right, well, I don't have my shot glass right now, but I'm just going to I'll do a shooting size one right here for you. Uh you want you oh, want you want to do that course. one with me? Let's do let's let's of do course. like a shot size of it, all right? Hold on. I got to get mine. Yo, yeah, no no no. No rush, man. Dude, this is this has been incredible. This has been a great tasting so far, man. I really appreciate it. Johnny, cheers. Thanks cheers. for having me on. Of course. Oh, that was fantastic, man. Now let's get on to, uh, oh yeah, no, I can see that. That's a really smooth gin too. A lot of people who try gin for the first time, I, I know a lot of people like, oh, it tastes like gasoline or something. There's a lot of those strong gins out there. The, the, the tankerays, the beef, the beef eaters in the world where they are kind of, you know, 
they probably start your car with that shit. Um, exactly. I love, I love them. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I'd shoot one of those. This, I could see myself doing that at the club. I'm sure that's where you, where you guys oh, no, it's again, I, my, my whole thing in life is trying new experiences with products and, uh, and, uh, he's taught me something. Mm. So we're on, we don't have to drink these cause it's too, it's too much now. Okay. But we'll, we'll talk about them. So this yeah. is Bel Air, the last one. Yep. Did you get these? I did. I did. I get, uh, which one do you want to talk about first? Let, let's, the, well, you talked a little bit about the rose. So let's get back to that first because that one was the first one you guys put out, right? Um, Correct. This is, this is the, we call it black bottle rose. This is where we start. Well, let me take it back. Let me take a step back. I told you earlier, I had this best of the best mentality. That's mm-hmm. how I think. I want to think how to make a product better. The, to me and to most people, the best still rose in the world comes from Provence mm-hmm. in France. That's the Cote d'Azur. It's the French Riviera. It's Saint Tropez, Monaco, Nice, Cannes. That's where the best still rose grapes come from. Absolutely agree with you. That's where uh, uh, <laughs> Brad and uh, Angelina Jolie did theirs yeah, too for a while. Uh, yeah. uh, Marbel, uh, Mirabel. Mirabel, that's right. Is their brand. But that is by far. And to me, it was, well, wait a minute. Why, if the best rosé grapes come from Provence, to me, the best sparkling rosé should come from Provence. That would, that would stand um, to reason. And then we said the same thing to the white side of the category. Where's the best grapes in France? The best grapes in France are Chardonnay from Burgundy. That's where it comes from. Mm-hmm. And that's where we created or crafted Bel Air. Um, uh, Bel Air today is now the single largest producer from Provence of Rosé. Uh, we started with this brand as our figurehead. We wanted to do something different. Um, we didn't want to sound and look like everybody else. And this is a drier br- Rosé. Um, what's also really neat and next time when you when you open it or, or or anybody watching opens this, if you notice rose is is you think it's pink. It's not. It's very salmon color. It's very orangey. This is very dark. Um, we wanted that. We wanted that to come across. We wanted it to be this beautiful pink rose that's pink, pinkish red. Um, but this is where it started. Today this brand is uh, you know, competes with Moet and Vouv. This is the number one uh, in the United States yeah. as an example. So this is our rosé. And if I stick with the rosés, this is the other one, our second one. You got this one? Which is Lux Rosé. Lux, yeah. So this falls into the demi-sec category, which would be a sweeter champagne. Okay. So so this is all in France. You already said the regions and stuff. I know that... Uh... Champagne usually has to come from the Champagne region. Uh, otherwise, it's called uh, sparkling. Do you, uh, how many of the, do, you, do you guys get the champagne go ahead on these, or are we looking at sparklings? It falls. It's 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 uh, sparkling from France. It is okay. falls since it's not in Champagne. It falls outside. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, but for me, it's a again having done Champagne, it's a better product. Yeah, uh, because we're not hindered by the process. Yeah, so you're not hindered in that in that one space. Um, real quick before we move on from the rose eggs, I know we got we got a gold and, a, and another and a, and a brood, I believe, over here. Um, I wanted to ask about the rose too because a few years ago, I'm pretty sure I saw Rick Ross repping one of these uh, one of these roses on on a show that I like. I'm a big sports fan. First take when uh, they were out in Miami, probably about five years ago, something like that. And then I know that you've Rick Ross and Little Wayne have been kind of ambassadors for you guys o- over the years here here and there. Um, again, going back to the, the hip hop culture that you've ingratiated yourself into, um, have you just crossed paths with a lot of these guys or do you, do you, do you see that it, it fits your demographic? What, what's the, uh, or is it just the big fandom? Everything for us, Johnny is organic. Um, I want to work with people I, who like my brands, um, Oprah was one of our biggest fans of Ace of Spades. Martha Stewart was one of our biggest fans of Bel Air. Uh, we have so many people who are supporters of our brands who drink them. Um, and Rick is one of those. Wayne is one of those. Wiz is one of those. Post is one of those. Um, but we're big. What we're big at is 
if you're supporting us, we want to support you. We'll, we'll uh, you know, I, I think this gets back to, it's a more of a bigger picture look for me. A lot of brands, and this is from a corporate perspective, they don't know how to, the fans make brands. That's how it works. They make, you know, they make you successful. Yeah. You should approach them and do something with them to thank them for that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So we're big in the, we're big in the music space. We'll produce videos. We'll help support artists. Um, we do a lot of stuff. I like the music space. I like that space. And I, I, it's, they've, they appreciate everything we do. And, and I, in the broad strokes, uh, and it's how we've built, how we b- think of ourselves. So whether it's, if it's heavy metal or we're big in, in EDM music, whether it's Steve Aoki or San Holo or, or, uh, cheat codes, like we have lots of people who support us. Um, so I don't know. I, I love this. I love this part of our business because this is what alcohol is. It's connecting people. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's how it's always been for me too. Um, not to digress too much. So let's get back to this and then, um, I'll have a few co- follow-ups on, on the music thing here. So, uh, what, what do you, what do you want to show me next? You want to show so me the this gold? This is the white side of the category. Okay. So we have two cubes, um, the gold, the gold bottle and the white bottle, the gold bottle is a traditional brute. This is traditional brute. And then the Lux bottle would be a uh, Demi falls into the sweeter side, or it would fall into the Demi sec category. Okay. Demi sec, it just means the, the amount of sugar that's in there. Um, but these two are produced in Burgundy. So this is our collection of four Bel Airs, the uh, Rosé, Lux Rosé, Lux and gold. Um, they're amazing brands do unbelievably well. The taste is, I, I can put them up against any brand out there, whether it's Dom or Moet or Vouv or any other product, uh, and the consumer gets it. They understand. And this one, this one is probably, as you said, uh, it's, you know, it's killing it in America, killing it in the, uh, probably Canada as well, a few other countries. Um, this one's probably more readily available out of all your products. This would be the one that's probably in most Just places. Just because it's, it's, it's been out the longest. Mm-hmm. So Bel Air is in close to 100 countries, um, big in France, in the UK, in Vietnam, in uh, uh, Vietnam, all over. Wow. Um, but it's, uh, it's a great brand. And what's nice about our brands is they work together. So... Uh, if you like Bel Air, you're going to love Bamboo. If you're going to like Bamboo, you're going to love McQueen. If you like McQueen, you're going to love uh, Vion. They're like kids. They work together. They're family. Um, much, like your, much like your company. Here. Much like your company with you and your brothers. I, yeah. think that's, I think that's... 100%. Yeah. And self-made, everything like that. It's just... It's so cool to have this conversation with you. I think we got to wrap up here in a second. I know you got a lot to do. Um, but the last thing I want to ask you about is like kind of the, you know... A little bit more of the run in the mill, but we've talked a lot about music and a lot about how you revere that culture and kind of bring it into everything that you do. So I just want to ask, like, what are some of your favorite acts of all time? Maybe something you ha- that you've just come into recently that maybe me and my fans need to get into. Um, you know, just uh, just tell me about your musical influences throughout your life. Ah, uh, well, I I have there's. There's what I grew up with, which I love, which is everything from Violent Femmes and R.E.M. and uh, uh, Talking Heads and Cars and uh, uh, meeting Rick Ocasek was just, uh, that was the end for me. That was, you know, I remember I remember li- listening to ACDC for the first time, I, uh, Ario Speedwagon for the first time. Like those was uh, uh, the who, like those were the first three. Uh, in my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. Those, those groups kind of define my growing up. Um, I think hip hop has played a big role because I just, I'm inspired by, uh, culture. I'm inspired by individuals. Uh, it's funny. Everyone I mentioned early on is a, is a group. Everyone I mentioned now is an individual, you know, uh, which is different. Um, I'm a big fan of <laughs> hip hop. I don't know. Old school. Uh, if you remember fat lip. Oh yeah. <laughs> a huge fan. <laughs> That's that. my goal. I'm going to have him. Are you going to have him, for, gonna have him on? For, 
I, I, I'd love to meet him. But I, again, it's, you know, like everything, music inspires. I'm a fan of Wayne right now. Again, like it comes and goes. I don't know. I get into music just like I get into alcohol. I stick with one thing for a long time and I kill it and ruin it. And then I got to move on to something else. <laughs> well, I hope you haven't killed or ruined Avenged Sevenfold yet. Cause you said when we, when we, when we started this Zoom call, you were listening to a little Avenged Sevenfold. So I appreciate the, I appreciate well, the Well, shout out that. to you guys. <laughs> shout out to you guys. You, you're, you, uh, I think it's, it's probably oh, what close to 20 years for you guys. Oh, we started. So your brand started the same year uh, our band started in 1999. I didn't join until 2002 when I grew up because I was 15 at the time. So by the time I turned 18, I joined the band. Um, but uh, yeah, before that, the the band original members formed in uh, 1999. So same. same Did you timeline. know them when you were 15? Yeah, we we've grown up and uh, even to this day, uh, the members that grew up in Huntington Beach, we all live. I mean, the furthest walk I have from my house to my bandmates' house is 10 minutes. And that's the furthest wow, walk. It's awesome. So yeah, no, we we were born and raised together. Uh, we're very much a family before we are a band. Um, of course, we all love music, and that's the passion. But you know, it, it it's all about family with us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I I I I, uh, I appreciate you having me on. Um, I hope I educate you in some way and introduce you some new brands that that you'd never tried before. But. Uh, we love what we do. I freaking love this industry. I owe everything to it. There's nothing better. No offense. There's nothing better than if I could drink and sing, maybe that'd be the best of the both worlds, <laughs> but I can't, I, I can't do the latter, but I can, at least I can drink good. Uh, that, I, I'm in the same boat. Don't forget. I'm the bass player. I, I don't sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I do some back. I do some background shit here and there, but for the most part, I'm just back there playing bass and drinking. So thank you for turning me on to this stuff and educating me on some of it. And, uh, giving me some wonderful things to taste here. Thank you so much. Everyone go check out Brett Barish, CEO of Sylvia and Brands, everywhere, easy enough to find. And uh, all his shows, his, his booze. I'm so excited to hear and, and talk to you in person um, next time when you have some some more of those uh, eight or nine projects you got going on. I'd love to have you back Thank on. You. Love to drink with you in person. We'll be traveling again at some point. I'm sure you will, and we'll be able to – uh, cheers in person. So until then, thank you so much, Brett. Thanks, um, Johnny. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Keep drinking and get your shots. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. Cheers. Bye-bye.